Okay, guys, now I wasn't too disappointed with the World Cup, but apparently getting knocked out in the second round by the seventh best team in the world is a disappointment these days. Women social media fans or something. So we need to bounce back, even though we weren't that bad, like we beat the Ivory Coast. Everyone's forgot that for some reason. We've got Peru, it's away, but they're below us in the world rankings and then Japan. And I think we can take them. They're on the slide, they're on the rise, okay? So wins here against Peru and Japan. Let's take some of that pressure off and make our way back up the rankings. Bounce back here, boys. Even though I don't think we actually are bouncing back from anything embarrassing, but win, win, please win. Party in the streets in the cities on fire. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 106 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both Kashmir Technicolor and the All Whites and Come Up Day. It's our first international window off day of the 2034 FIFA World Cup. We're going to take on Peru away from home. Those guys a bit below us on the world rankings and off the back of that travel back to New Zealand to take on Japan just above us on those rings. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but only going forward a few days off the back of yesterday's episode we made our way through the finals of the Chatham Cup at Kashmir Tech if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner as you can see 2-0 win there in the final over Auckland City we pick up the Chatham Cup for I believe it's the sixth time in seven years since we have made the move down from AFC Auckland. But today we switch our focus back to the All Whites for the first time since last week at the FIFA World Cup where I unfortunately got knocked out a bit earlier than I was hoping in the second round, albeit by a top 10 team in Spain today. Should be a chance for us here to pick up some wins, but before we get stuck in to our opposition, a quick squad update going in to this window, because of course, first one since the World Cup so there has been just a little bit of change, albeit only one retirement that does come in defensive midfield. Joe Bell is no longer with us as a player. I'm pretty sure he's still coaching somewhere. Not too sure where or if he's any decent, but Joe Bell no longer an option. That means that Anto Braich stays in the squad from the World Cup. Of course, had to drop three players from that World Cup squad. So no Joe Bell makes things a bit easier. Also, Adam Whiteout with an injury had usually been in the squad I think in this upcoming cycle, he'll probably play a bit more than Libero Kakache at left back, just considering that Libby is 34 years old. Not sure if he's actually going to make the next World Cup, but for this window, Adam White, under a little bit of an injury, clouds Kakache is first choice, and Cody Phoenix stays in the squad from the World Cup. The Western Sydney Wanderers, 29-year-old, who can also play a bit further forward, and the other player we got rid of was our third-choice striker in Craig Johnston, but apart from that, it's full strength for this window. As you can see, a couple of players there only recommended for 45 minutes for this first game. A week in between games, so hopefully these guys will be okay for that second game, which in theory should be a lot tougher when we take on Japan, who are up in 25th on the world rankings. But Martin Darman, as per usual, a bit naked, having been playing for Salford. I think those guys are still in the championship over in England. Let's just check and click on the badge there. They are. But they're down in 23rd, albeit still early stage of the season. But not looking too good for those guys at the moment. Also, Michael Cornelius Beal, only recommended for 45 minutes for this first game as well. So it does mean a couple of changes to our usual first choice level. Marco Staminich will start alongside Anto Branich because Louis Evans bit tied off back of that Chatham Cup final that we did just play. And also with Darman on that 45 minute restriction. And also he's only on a yellow heart as well. So that one does make sense. Pick the Sono. He can start it right back. Also, the center backs. I'm going with what I thought was the first choice pairing going into that World Cup when I did the player evaluations for our extended squads. So Curtis and Kelly Heald will try them at center back. Tyler Binden on the bench. If Kelly Heald or Curtis don't perform too well, though, we could make that switch back pretty quickly because Tyler Binden, of course, is at a Premier League club, the only one currently. In this all-white squad, so that's what it does look like going into this window. First up, we are away from home. I was going to do a bus trip for this one, but trying to get to the stadium, which is actually not this one we're playing at, for this game, you get to the stadium, but then there's like a 20-minute detour to get into the actual stadium itself, so it's a really weird bus trip. 
it would have taken a good half hour to get through. So I think we'll just skip it and just get on with the action in these games. Peru, I think we can take it or leave it for a bus trip there. But these guys are equal 43rd in the world. As you can see, recent friendlies actually been doing quite well. Have the team out of South America, but there should be a team being below us on the world rankings that we can beat. And off the back of that, we do take on Japan, who I think could be right for the picking there. You can see another window actually coming up in November. We'll touch on that come the end of today's episode. But Japan had a pretty miserable time at the World Cup, as you can see. Draws against Ukraine and Costa Rica, and of course, a loss to Argentina, to be fair. You can understand that one, but the other two results, a bit average for a team who are 26th in the world. These days, they're managed by a former Melbourne City manager and Auckland United manager in real life, and Hiroshi Miyazawa. But definitely, as you can see, their bottom right corner on the decline might be a bit similar to South Korea, who we played in the last World Cup cycle. This could be a team that we can take on regularly to just hopefully help us get above them on those world rankings, and especially with that one being at Mount Smart. That does look like a scalp that we could claim. So those are the two teams we are playing in this international window. And we get stuck into the action pretty shortly as we head to South America to take on Peru. And here are the team sheets for this away game in this international window. There are Peru. They are going with a 4-4-2 to be fair coming to this one in some pretty good form as we saw before, albeit don't think they actually made their way to that last World Cup. That's the reason that maybe they could pick up some good results. There's our team has ran through before. Bratic, Staminic, and Sono are starting instead of the usuals, but apart from that, we are at full strength, and we get the action underway here, and it is an early highlight in our favour of Fran, which we do take short and play it for, get into the opposition half pretty quickly here, albeit McDonald plays that one back to Bambi on ice, aka Lucas Kelly Hill, now Young plays that one for to Josh Pickering down the left-hand side, have just seen that his team, the Chicago Fire, have qualified for the MLS playoffs. A very fancy pass in amongst that, and a shot there, but unfortunately, it comes off the woodwork, and Peru can clear their lines, but encouraging start, and shortly off the back of that, another highlight for us here, Jamie Young will flip this one far post, think they was looking for Justin Keat, unfortunately can't find him, but then, good interception that, from Kelly Heald, from the ball played forward, now Josh Pickering, right on the edge of the box, pulls this one back there for Stamina, Young gets taken out, but thankfully, George McDonald is there to bang that one home. It's been a really good start here in Peru. And we take a 1-0 lead after only four minutes. And hopefully this might indicate this will be an easy day at the office here against the team just below us on the world rankings. But really good start chance there before, which came off the woodwork. George McDonald puts that one home to be fair. Probably would have been a penalty for that push on Young anyway. And we take a 1-0 lead. Albeit very short the back of that opening goal. We are now down the other end. Hopefully not going to do a Gareth Southgate here and just stop playing football. But there is Peru here with a thrown inside the final third. Good tackle there from Sono. And then someone else there had a bit of a nibble at the ball. It was Justin Keat. Can't quite win it. Arc here with a shot. The beefy that highlight. Not up to too much. Easy save there for Paulson. And we're still 1-0 in front. And we've gone for nearly 10 minutes off the back of that chance for Peru to grab a goal back. And they're on the ball here again and actually start to make their way inside our half. Average for that from Simon Curtis and Vargas can make his way inside the box. Takes on a shot. Thankfully, the woodwork comes to our rescue. Peru, though, do still have the ball here inside of our box. But thankfully, pass it backwards and we escape the danger. But Peru here starting to find a bit of fire off the back of that opening goal. We scored things. So it certainly changed off the back of that for some reason. We're playing like England. But anyway, Justin Keat. Starts to make his way forward. Hopefully, this will be a chance for us. We'll get, as I say, that poor ball over the top looking for Pickering. And Peru are back on the ball. Chavez plays that one out to Medina. We're tightly marking near Vargas. Unfortunately, though, he does get in behind. And that's a nice pass there to Grimaldo. That is down our left-hand side. Plays that one in there to Garcia, who sweeps that one home. Not too sure if that took a deflection, but Alex Paulson could not make a save. And to be fair, that's been coming off the back of our opening goal. Peru have been all over us since then. A bit surprising considering first two highlights. It was the complete other way around, but that's a bit average there from Libby. Just gave Grimaldo far too much space. Garcia can sweep that one home and make it one all in a highlight. Straight from the restart, hopefully. Chance for us here to get back on the front foot and grab an instant reply and go back in front. Victor Sono cuts inside a little bit before playing that one forward to Jamie Young. Good chance here to George McDonald, but Vizgars with a good chance there off the back of that. Just going to cancel a shout that I was about to do because I do want to see what happens from the subsequent corner. So let's just see what happens from this before we do encourage the boys. Hopefully, 
grab a goal to put us back in front. Unfortunately, nothing doing from that corner cut. Jay will try and float that one, looking for Pickering, but unfortunately, Vizgars can come out and claim that. Now it's time for the encourage. Still one all at the 24 minute mark. And off the back of that, another highlight here a free kick of someone I imagine McDonald must have been offside. Vizgars will pump this one deep. Kelly healed. Doesn't jump Garcia, gets him behind and puts it away. And I'm already sick of Bambi on ice. Let's take him off here for Tyler Binden. I think that's the last chance we give to that centre back pairing. They're a bit mere at the World Cup. And Tyler Binden, Premier League experience. And he is better star rated than Kelly Hill, especially as a ball playing defender. But tribute wise, Kelly Hill should be better. But that's pathetic. Time to send the message here to our boys because off the back of that first goal we scored. It's been pretty poor, and Peru are now 2-1 in front. And we hit the half-hour mark, and it's a goal kick here to Peru. Thankfully, this time, Stumich will win this one, and there's a chance for us here to maybe grab an equaliser off the back of a really poor period after that first goal, which we did score. Tyler Binden, of course, coming on for Lucas Kelly healed, just not doing what centre-back should do and heading the ball away or even trying to. No jump from him. Pretty pathetic stuff there from the man who these days is over in the MLS, I believe, to be fair, I think most of our defenders these days are over in the MLS, but Curtis now is on the ball, Gratic drops back there, and it goes back to Tyler Binden currently, just holding the ball nicely here at the back, while still creeping into the opposition half, Simon Curtis back on the ball for there to Marco Stamenich, nice one out there, Pickering, albeit has some work to do to keep this in, but that's a really nice ball, it's George McDonald with an EIEI -E goal, he's on the hat trick, that's his second as we get the lovely South American commentary there. Go, go, go. And we grab an equaliser here. So thankfully, not behind for too long. In Peru, Pickering did really well to keep that in and then find the head of George McDonald, bottom right corner. Nothing Viz Gaz can do about that one. To all with 15 minutes left in the first half. And before I can wrap that up, there might be a free kick. I encourage there isn't. Still to all late in the first half. And just as we're about to make our way to half time, there's a late highlight here in three minutes of added time, and it might be in our favour. Brakic on the ball can find Young there in a bit of space. Takes on a shot from long range, nearly beats Vizgars, but to be fair, tight angle, and he does make a pretty solid save. There you can see the match momentum. We've been all over Peru, but unfortunately, just that period where they scored two goals off that of our first one, and it's locked up here at half time. Josh Pickering, a very late yellow card there in that first half. He's actually playing quite well, but might just play things safe, especially with six subs available in this window. Does feel like we're the team who's been better in this half based on stats, but unfortunately, some soft goals we can see there, especially that second one. That's why Lucas Kelly healed no longer on the field. We'll make that sub. Jacob Hall Jones can come on for Pickering. We'll tell him the guy's going okay, but definitely can do better and hopefully can grab a win here away in Peru as we're currently locked up at two all. And we've just gone past the hour mark in this game. We've just put on Chris Jones for Justin Keat on a red heart. And now Victor Sono has also dropped down to one. So may as well wrap these up into one highlight. Louis Evans can come on it right back. Also, I think it might be time for us here to just try and get at Peru a bit more in the second half. So we're going to go a bit wider and also distribute to our fullbacks. Definitely the team on the front foot in this game. But unfortunately, still two or no highlights so far in the second half. And now both our defensive midfielders they drop down to Red Heart, so we'll bring on Michael Cornelius Beal for Stumnich, and we'll bring on Darman, albeit that's probably a dumb idea considering he's on a yellow heart, so instead, let's bring on Ryan Billingsley at right back, and Louis Evans can go back forward to his more familiar position as a boring midfielder, still one sub left for the last 25 minutes of this game, and it's locked up at two all. And we just made way to the last 20 minutes of this game. Still not happy with the lack of highlights here in the second half. So now it's time for us here to go a bit more attacking with our wing players here in the all whites. So that does mean that Chris Jones and also Kakache, they can go on to attack a few players now who are down to red hearts. But the corner here in our favor, and that is a really good save. I think that was from Bezgars. Otherwise, that would have been a spectacular own goal if it had found its way into the back of the net. But another chance for us here from set piece. We can't quite get ahead. On the end of that one, Young plays that one out there to McDonald in a pretty good spot inside the box now. Beal floats that one over there, looking for Chris Jones, but unfortunately can't quite find him. And still two all with only 15 minutes left. Now, actually, this looks like a really good spot for a free kick for George McDonald. Hopefully, he can put this away to be fair. 
We don't score many free kicks here in this All Whites team, especially with the current lot out there, because that does mean that Marco Stumnich and of course no Joe Bell these days, who used to be our free kick takers, that did look like a bit of a cheeky short routine. Unfortunately though, we kind of stuff it up, albeit do get a corner shortly off the back of that. McDonald, of course, is looking for a hat trick, won't get it from this corner as he's taking it. They punch it clear there, and now Jones squares that one for Young, unfortunately, can't quite find him. That's that highlight done. About to make our way into the last 10 minutes now. It's a free kick again here for McDonald. That one is very well saved that from Vargas in goal. That did look like it hit the post, but actually got touched there from the Peru goalkeeper. Still two all, but definitely putting the pressure here on the South American team at home. But currently, can't quite put them to bed. Maybe that second goal we conceded through Lucas Kelly healed is going to prove costly. But again, have a corner from that previous one. Jamie Young, that's a really loose touch there on the edge of the box. Gives the ball away, and it's a free kick to Peru. Off the back of that, we're going to go attacking, because really, this does feel like a game that we should be winning based on stats. And also off the back of that, we are going to be a bit more expressive and chuck Louis Evans on two supporters. We make our way now into the last 10 minutes from off the back of that. There is a highlight. Hopefully, this doesn't prove costly, and we at least hold on for a draw. But this is definitely the game I was expecting to win in this window, despite the fact that Peru actually probably in better form than Japan but they are below them. On the world rankings, Chris Jones gets a chance to drop a back of a ball played forward from Louis Evans, but unfortunately, that one comes off the woodwork. That's happened quite a few times now in this game. The woodwork coming to the rescue of Peru, albeit that did happen to us in the first half. Now making our way into the last couple of minutes of this game. Need to strike soon if we're going to take a win here over in South America before going back to Mount Smart to take on Japan, but we are on the attack here. Ryan Billingsley at right back just sizes things up there for making his way was a touchline. Plays into Evans, who goes down. This is a really good chance for us here to steal this. Over in Peru, George McDonald looks to complete his hat trick. Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Buries it bottom right corner off the back of that. Going to pull pretty much everyone back here and try and defend this one goal. Leads all our attacking midfielders. They can go on to support the same with our wing backs. Our defensive midfielders, they can go on to defend also. Let's just start to time waste and be more disciplined as well. Slow the pace down when playing out from back. All that good stuff. Slow down the tempo. Just everything I can really think of here to make sure that Peru do not get another chance in this game. But thankfully, George McDonald steps up in this one and completes a hat trick thanks to that penalty, which was given late. Evans got brought down there inside the box from behind. I think there's no arguments about it being a penalty, but thankfully, McDonald can put it away and claim a hat trick here over in South America stats wise. Definitely the best team in this game as we make our way deep into three minutes of added time. A late highlight here, hopefully not going to do anything silly and give the home team a chance to equalize. Because to be fair, it's been one of those games so far. They haven't had too many chances, but have made the most of them as we steadily try and make our way here. Out from back, Hall Jones, a bit of an average pass, but thankfully Jones gets it back for us. But then, a bit average from him and somehow Peru actually get him behind us here. Grimaldo plays that one back to Vargas who starts to cut inside somehow. Find some space here on our left-hand side, looking there for the bottom left corner, but thankfully that goes just wide. Alex Paulson tried to save it, but thankfully off target, and we cling on for a 3-2 win. Not too sure how that game was so close. All bad, as I say, that Lucas Kelly healed. That was so poor for that second goal. That's why we subbed him. Thankfully off the back of that, our defense was pretty staunch, and we kicked back into gear, grabbed an equalizer, through George McDonald after he grabbed the opener nice and early and a late penalty, which he puts away to complete a hat trick and really carry us there to a 3 2 win over Peru. Certainly not the most convincing win scoreline wise, but to be fair, stats wise, not too bad. As we look at some other results on this match day, Australia, they beat Paraguay. Sad noises, but we pick up a win there over Peru. We'll come back shortly and take on Japan back in New Zealand. And we've gone forward a week, and thankfully Japan have actually showed up to play us, unlike some teams previously in this window. Now, a couple of changes for us. We've got Tyler Binden coming in for Kelly Heald. You know why if you saw that last game. And also changes in the defensive midfield. Back to first choice there with Louis Evans and Cornelius Beal. Here at Japan, I think it was a 4-4-2, but they are still in pretty horrid form. Hopefully can beat them and maybe sneak our way up the world rankings. And just shot the five minute mark here, first hide of this game in Japan of a throw and thankfully give the ball to us as Kakache is off the field with an orange injury that could impact us in this highlight, especially as currently they have the ball on our left hand side, thankfully 
for some reason actually now look to target us. Uh, right, Mori plays that one into the mixer. Tyler Binden, an own goal to be fair. At least he's tried, unlike Kelly Heald from that previous game. But that is really painful. Waika Kache is not on the field. Tyler Binden just pokes that one home to be fair. Sugimoto probably would have done the same if he didn't get in the way. But Tyler Binden there with a very early own goal. Just struggling here with the centre back to go alongside Simon Curtis in this window. And Japan already won the lap. And actually looking quite threatening here like we were against Peru early stages of that first game that we did play this window. Good chance from again there as they are off to a fly here. Are the Japanese, but thankfully this time Alex Paulson comes up with a good save. But Japan well and truly on the front foot here early. If they grab another, we could be in all sorts of trouble to be fair. Go very close from that corner, thankfully just off target. But not a good start. 1-0 behind. And very short at the back of those opening two highlights. Japan here have the ball at the back. And thankfully Kakache back on the field and wins that one there. Plays it forward to Pickering. And it goes back down there to Kakache. Goes back there to Pickering. Of course came off at half time in that previous game. Nice ball there for Evans in space. And out there to Victor Sono. Darman still the only player recommended for 45 minutes. This gets absolutely knackered over there in the championship for Selva. But Sono to be fair. Pretty solid in that first game. Now Pickering. That ball was way too deep, but great idea there to find George McDonald who will pick up an EI EI goal. It's a home game editing, Sean. Put the songs in, but he grabs his goal. That's now four in this window. Really good goal scoring touch here currently from the man who plays his trade over in Saudi Arabia, our captain these days, off the back of the retirement of Joe Bell. Good assist that from Pickering off the back of that pretty average ball from Sono. And we grab an equalizer just past the 10 minute mark. And we go all the way forward to just past the half hour, mate, for the next highlight in this game. Jamie Young, some good recovery work from him there. Just seeing what Libby Kache is up to, still on an orange injury. He's seeing a bit further forward, which is a bit surprising, considering he's a wing back on support, maybe. Should play things safe and take him off here for Cody Phoenix off the back of this highlight. But thankfully, we do keep hold of position here. And Curtis just starts to get us here inside of the opposition half. Albeit, as I say that, now we're back inside of our own, which is taking our time here, hoping for some gaps to open up and hopefully can do what Peru did to us in that first game and kick on from there. But we are going backwards currently, but thankfully still have the ball. Binden out there to Victor Sono. Does this man there for some pace and now plays that one in there for Justin Keat. Now Young going backwards for Beal and he finds Sono out on the right. Evans, he'll find Justin Keat takes on a shot there from a tight angle. The goalkeeper goes down far too early. That's what she said, and thankfully we go 2-1 in front here while we're here. Aren't going to make that sub Cody Phoenix. He can come on here for Kikache with that injury, but thankfully off the back of a pretty horrific start. We're in front here at Mount Smart. Justin Keat beats the goalkeeper. Not that he tried too hard, but we're 2-1 in front with 10 minutes left in the first half. And we're just making around to the last couple of minutes here of this first half. To be fair, stats-wise, this is a very even game, but thankfully both of our shots on target have found the back of the end, to be fair. You could argue all three of them have, because of course Tyler Binden with an own goal will go a couple of shots off there late in that first half, but thankfully uh, 2 1 in front. And to be fair, pretty happy with the players currently out there, so I don't think any changes needed here at half time, especially having already used one on Kakache with that first half injury. Hopefully, can pull away a bit more in the second half after coming from behind to grab a 2 1 lead. And we haven't had to wait too long here in the second half for the first highlight, but unfortunately might be in favour here of the away team in Japan. Tomodo was on the ball, tries to play it one over the top, but thankfully Cody Phoenix can head that one down. We might get a chance here to do something on the counter attack. Jamie Young, nice pull out there to Victor Sono, who makes his way forward down that right hand side. Does his man there for a bit of pace and picks out Josh Pickering. Time to get a bit rap style here on Sean Does FM. That's, that's such old man English, Sean. But anyway, Victor Sono with a really good assist there. And that's the cushion goal that we were looking for nice and early in the second half. Good work from in there. And Josh Pickering just leaps like a salmon there at the far post to head that one home. And we take a 3-1 lead against Japan. And only a couple minutes on from that early goal here in the second half. Now we'll go throw in here inside the final third again. Victor Sono will float this one far post for Josh Pickering. This time heads it into the ground. Beats I think that's Tani there in goal for Japan. Who's done a really struggle against us here in the latter stages of the first half. And also early stages of the second. Some big goals here either side of half time. Josh Pickering gets on a hat trick. Does the Chicago Fireman a better version of Jordan Shakiri it would appear like. And we now... 
4-1 and Brandon backed off the back of that. Jamie Young has gone down to a red heart. So Jamie Kelly, he can come on with a half hour left and a free goal advantage. And only a couple of minutes on from that previous sub now, it's time for us to make another one here. Victor Sono is down to a red hut. This time Darlene, despite being unrecommended for 45 minutes, is actually on a full green hut. So we'll bring him on here for the later stages of this game. Just make sure he actually gets some football in this window. Otherwise, just lots of ear points for doing nothing. As there's a highlight here, Japan pumped that one deep. Thankfully, Tyler Binden let that one float over his head but then recovered, unlike Kelly Heald from that first game against Peru. Now Kelly starts to make his way forward, almost curves that one inside of that right hand upright, but unfortunately can't quite hit the target. Off the back of that though, I might take off Cornelius Beal just to be safe. Going for this game, didn't say he was recommended for only 45 minutes, but the icon's there, so I think we'll play things safe and bring on Staminich in his place, especially now with a free goal. Leads. Off the back of that, there is a free kick to Japan. Good week that though from Justin Keat to stop that attack. Good inception there, albeit Paulson nearly just kicks that one into a defender. I think that might have been Tyler Binden, thankfully, goes across there to Curtis. We almost lose the ball, eventually get that one forward down our left-hand side to Jamie Kelly, who's had a good impact already since coming off the bench, albeit as I say that, the Hart Valley hero does lose out on the ball, but then wins it back for us. We're back on the attack here inside the final third, Stumnich to Kelly McDonald, goes back there to Marco, who will take on a long-range shot, but that one goes well over the bar. 69 minutes gone, and we're 4-1 in front. And we continue lots of highlights in these couple of games in today's episode. Shortly off back of that previous one where the ball was blazed over the bar there from Stumnich. Now it's a frown for us here inside of the opposition half, Victor Sono. In fact, not Darman these days at right back on the ball, but Sono was very good when on the field. A couple of assists there for Josh Pickering, who is on a red heart, but just want to leave him out there considering he is searching for a hat-trick. And he's on the ball here, albeit quite a way out from goal, plays that one for Cody Phoenix, and now for to Jamie Kelly, that one takes a big deflection from Kamea, it's an own goal for Japan, off the back of that, we will take off though Justin Keat for Chris Jones, down to a red heart, that will be one of our final subs, but that is a rather fortunate goal, we get a bit of payback there for earlier on with Tyler Binden, just helping that one get on target there was Kamea, and that makes it 5-1 to the all-whites, and in fact off the back of that, we actually see the highlight from the restart, off the back of Chris Jones coming onto the field. Let's see if Japan can pull back at this stage. What you'd imagine would be a consolation goal, but better say the former Auckland United and Melbourne City manager might have his work cut out here to keep these guys inside of the top 30 of the world rankings. Or better, as I say that, they're actually on the attack here. Get a big chance, but that is somehow missed target and it's not a corner. Big miss there from Japan, but we're well and truly in control of this game. 5 1 in front with 10 minutes left. And just now into the last 10 minutes of this one, we're going to make our final sub. We're definitely going to leave Pickering out there on a hat trick, but Curtis goes down to a red heart. Let's give Kelly Heald a bit of game time, hopefully build up some confidence off the back of that slightly shocking performance he put out against Peru off the back of that. Going to go a bit more attacking as well, just to see if Pickering can get this hat trick in the last couple of minutes of this game. But he is definitely knackered, as is Libby Evans, so maybe need to rest them in our next game at Kashmir Tech, but Pickering will play this one for a couple of players there get taken out off of the ball, but George McDonald also gets himself on a hat-trick late in this game. That's now five goals in this window, and a five-goal lead over Japan. Really good comeback after falling behind early. There's six one in front against the team a fair way above us on the world rankings. This should be a big result, and hopefully get us up the world rankings off the back of this game, and also, of course, that winner over Peru, albeit those guys were below us. Not too sure if that's going to help us too much, but this has been a really good performance, albeit only six shots on target. Thankfully, all of them goals, albeit one, was an own goal, but we also scored an own goal, so I think the five-goal advantage is actually deserved, but we absolutely fresh their Japan at Mount Smart to good wins for us there in that window, and Japan, they might be a team we take on quite regularly if they're going to perform like that, as we beat them 6-1. So a good international window for us there with the All Whites now first one off the back of that slightly disappointing FIFA World Cup. We just get by Peru there thanks to a late penalty and then smash Japan 6-1 after going down early. That was a much better performance actually. I say performance. Stats wise I think they actually played better against Peru but thankfully a lot more clinical in that game against the team a lot higher than them. On the world rankings Pickering was the man of the match from that second game two goals and two assists but unfortunately we moved up one place back to where we were before that window started. So not too sure what's gone on there 
I would have thought we would have gone back up the rankings a bit off the back of that window. It did absolutely nothing, which is a bit confusing. I still think it was actually pretty harsh how we went down them off the back of losing to the Netherlands and Spain at the World Cup, considering both those teams are a fair way above us on the rankings. But yeah, unfortunately, not the greatest rise in terms of our ranking this year with that World Cup and those couple of losses that we did suffer, but still inside of the top 40. And hopefully going to start pushing a bit closer to being a top 30 team sooner rather than later and keep making our way up these rankings before we get stuck in to the next World Cup in 2038. But that will do it for today's episode. As I said, two decent wins there with the All Whites, especially that second one, absolutely smashing Japan 6-1. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and finish up 2034 here in the safe, so it does mean if we make it, we'll play the National League final with Kashmir Tech, but we should be making it because we're Kashmir Tech, but also, as you saw earlier, an international window is coming up around about the time of that final. Unfortunately, Cameroon actually pulled out of the game I had scheduled, apart from the previous one we were taking on Syria, and that's a team that I think we should beat quite comfortably, albeit those guys actually charging up the rankings quite a bit recently in this save, but I think what we might do is do a friendly one of the two that we play in the November window before taking part in the National League final with Kashmir Tech to round out 2034. So until that tomorrow, as well as the end of season review and all that good stuff, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.